Hi, Ed Greenwood here, creator of The Forgotten Realms, or as you may know of it, The World of D&D. Here we talk about realms lore, and the realms lore I'd like to delve into today is the most interesting thieves who are currently lurking and doing other things in the realms right now. Number 4. Havalantra Tarly, the Banished Drow. She is a six-armed female drow, cast out of her family as a deformed baby into the wild underdark to fend for herself. Raised by Thalugul, an Ettercap who made much use of her as a lure to bring other creatures it could eat into its traps, Havalantra fled years later as Thalul was being eaten by a roper and struck out on her own, seeking the surface world and ending up in the cellars and sewers of Calumport, where she eked out a precarious living by stealing from the stores of food and drink. Eventually, she was hunted by a hired band of mercenaries to stop her thieving, and with glee, she hunted and slew all of them, one by one, plundered the bodies, and set out to steal all she wanted from the part of Calumport that lies below the surface, and higher, following secret passages up through buildings that connected to the cellars. For decades, she lurked and eavesdropped, learning Kalashite ways, the common tongue, and more and more about humans in general, until she decided to embark on a life of stealing what she wanted from the wealthiest folk, then taking great delight in any guards, adventurers, or hired slayers sent after her in retaliation. She would lure them into traps of her own making, just as she lured underdark predators into Thlul's traps years before. She's grown very cunning over the years, choosy about whom she robs, and only stealing when she has many traps set up and ready, because she now has plenty to eat and steals mainly for entertainment, both in the thefts and in bringing doom to any responders. Many citizens of Calumport believe an entire guild of murderous thieves lurks beneath their city, entirely due to the activities of Havalantra alone, though in recent years she's increasingly taken to following specific Kalashites active in the cellars and sewers, framing them, then slaying them herself if no other Kalashite does. Number 3. Ruvene Miss Timrel, the Impersonator. Ruvene Miss Timrel is a short, slender, pertly beautiful brunette with a pale green eyes, former playhouse actress and consort for hire of Waterdeep and Scornubel, who relocated to Baldur's Gate in hopes of attracting a larger clientele to pay for her charms. One night last spring, hired for a night of dalliance by Lady Sunelvra Yome of Baldur's Gate, uh, who is sister to Lady Ilbranta, the matriarch of House Yomain, she was a stunned as Sulnalva to discover they were so close in looks that the noblewoman's servants mistook one for the other. Ruvene seized this unexpected opportunity. Late, late that night, while abed together, she strangled Sulnalva, fed her body to the garter robe shaft unobserved, or so she hopes, and has impersonated her ever since. This was publicly easy as the Lady Sunelvra kept a low public profile because she handled the family's business investments, which the haughtiest nobles of the gate consider common work. Although noble houses are admired for being wealthy and successful, they don't want to be seen working hard to achieve success. Sunelvra favored not just property investments, owning city properties in the bowl and earning rents from them, but business investments, both small and safe, sponsoring shops in the city and earning paybacks for such loans that are like monthly rents, and large and risky, sponsoring ship voyages or bulk cargo imports and exports. Luckily for Ruvene, Sunelvra kept meticulous records, and even more luckily, Ruvene has a talent for shrewd and sly investments, hidden in the guise of diversifying investments into the cities of Zazasper and Deromar in Tethyr, the thief has been siphoning off Yomain profits into her own purse. As well, 
as living luxuriously as a yome. As Sunelvra, Ruvenet's most recent investment is in Belteth Telth's Boys, a small band of all female, the band's name is Deliberate Misdirection, sneak thieves active in Askatla, stealing only documents such as contracts and deeds not for blackmail or to try to claim ownerships, but to use the detailed knowledge of who owns what in creative ways to set up swindles. That murderous little Ruben A. Miss Timber. Hi, if you're enjoying this video, please like it, subscribe, and please click the little bell icon so you can be notified when, you know, new stuff happens. Thank you. Hi folks, I am Ivan with Many Realms, and I just wanted to quickly say thank you so much. Without you, honestly, this project just simply wouldn't be possible. And that includes maintaining this YouTube channel, as well as everything else that we have going on over at Patreon, like extended cuts of all these videos, short audiobooks narrated by Ed himself, Realms Lore write-ups, exclusive Discord roles, merch, and everything else that we do for this, our geeky community. If you want to show your continued support for Ed, head on over to patreon.com slash edgreenwood and become a protector of the realms today. And don't forget to check out Ed's shop, link in the description, if you want to get your hands on some legendary adventuring gear, where we're always working on new designs. Thanks so much again, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Number 2. Lamarambra Nashfire, the Termish Rogue. She is an adventure rogue from Termish, so she's brown-skinned, jet black-haired, brown-eyed, and she happens to be plump. She seems favored of the gods, too. When the adventuring band she joined in Scornubel, Brasmer's Blades, was attacked by no less than three hobgoblin warbands on their way to Ascor, she alone survived. She had the good fortune to have found a hiding place when she reached that ruined city, and the additional luck not to have it flattened atop her own head when one of the many friendly sky fights between the sibling blue dragons Anaxter and Chesaran resulted in a spectacular crash to earth atop the ruined shells of some stone buildings and flattening them, in which an Anaxter lost no less than three of its scales, and in the pain and tumult of the fray didn't immediately notice. Lamarambra had recently survived boldly stealing some sort of teleportation ring from a cache in Undermountain left by the mad mage Alistair, and she used the ring to transport the scales one by one to a warehouse that didn't belong to her in Scornuvel, but which she knew stood empty. From its gloomy back corner, she sold off the scales one by one to three different alchemists for high prices, then stole them back from all three and resold them to as many wizards faking her own deaths when one of the alchemists sent hired adventurers after her. Lamarambra was then wise enough to convert her takings from coins to far more portable gems, then swiftly use the ring to depart Scornubel for a wilderland veil she knew well in Termish. From there, she made her way to the Vilhon, sold her gems to interested dwarven jewelers for high prices, and bought urban shops with living space above them in central Arabar that she could rent out for a good fist, unquote, of monthly income. She's quietly living in one right now under an assumed name and planning her next earning foray that she intends will be nothing like her previous efforts and will take her to rebuilding Sembia where the chaos and an abundant wealth should afford her shining opportunities. Number 1. Armra Velathon, the Cloaker, is a middle-aged, short, dirty, wavy, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, nondescript-looking sorcerer who perfected a spell that enabled her to shift shape into the physical form of the monster known as a Cloaker gaining the flying and physical attack abilities of cloakers, but not the sonic effects or random, whimsical, and territorial nature. Shortly thereafter, Armra thoroughly scared herself when some of her spell experimentations went badly wrong, trapping her for a time in cloaker form until she devised a ruse to get herself caught in an anti-magic field cast by a wizard and so escape back into her human form. 
She then swore off all magical experimentations and began to use her spells sparingly, relying on the abilities of her cloaker body to get ahead in life. These included an increasingly dangerous career as a snatch-and-grab thief. But after Armra nearly got herself killed for a third time, she hit upon the notion of hiring adventurers to make heists for her, which is what she's doing right now. Moving from city to city across Faroon, patiently and quietly researching which city residents own portable magic items she can have her adventurers steal for her. She's not above tricking them as to their payment or sending them to likely deaths in her service so she can move on without unpleasant complications or even her own role in the thefts being identified by those stolen from. In this way, Armra has accumulated a necklace of missiles, several plus one daggers, an alchemy jug, and half a dozen other items. She intends to collect many more, selling duplicates and living off the proceeds. And there you have it, some of the most interesting and deployable thieves active in the realms right now. Welcome back to that little corner of the podcast we call Realm Speak, where we stumble over names, phrases, and words in the realms so you don't have to. Today, Let's tackle two things, Artificers and Azimar. The first, a character class or profession, depending on the edition of the game you're playing or where you're talking about, and it's somebody who either casts magic or does things with their hands like a crafter, and we call them an Artificer. 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 Hey, I'm an Artificer. What's up to you? And then the Azimar. You know, we look at that double A and we go, oh, how do you pronounce that? And sure enough, you can pronounce it with a hard A sound. But in the realms, most people call it an Azimar. It's an Azimar. Who, after years of faithful service as the master of vaults for Kalimchen, training and leading the Silpash's guards and security force, oversaw the construction of new larger and more secure treasury vaults under the vizier's palace in the eastern expansion of the city and stole almost all of the trade bars and mixed